the Football Postcast in association with Paddy Power, the place to bet on football in play with a huge special every weekend. Hi there, welcome along to the regular weekly Racing Post Football Postcast. Uh, the panel today comprises me, Bruce Millington, him, James Milton, on the line, Mark Langdon, and over in Ireland from Paddy Power, their odds compiler and first scorer, top judge. Listen to him whenever he comes up with the first scorer tip. It's Sean O'Sullivan. Uh, we will be looking ahead to a fantastic weekend of live action. I'll also be pressing the guys for an anti-post bet that they think that if you place that today, it might pay dividends for the rest of the season. And also, we will have our weekend nap selections. Before that, though, it's the usual six questions, uh, two each, and then... Each of the panel gets to answer the question they wish they had been asked, but wasn't. So, we'll start off, we'll look back on the international week. Uh, first of all, do any of you need to apologise? Have any of you been out drinking alcohol and feel the need to apologise <laughs> to the nation? No? no? No. OK, jolly good. That doesn't tell you whether they were drinking alcohol and feel the need to apologise or weren't drinking alcohol, <laughs> but don't feel the need to apologise. Mark Langdon, first question to you. What was the most encouraging aspect of either of the two games or the two as a body of work. From an England perspective, what will Gareth Southgate have taken most from the two games? Uh, probably the first half um, against Spain. Um, they, they put a good press on. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure um, whether Spain were overly bothered about the game, particularly um, you know, in, in that first half. It seemed to be going through the motions a little bit. But um, you know, it, it seemed to me to be sort of back to the energy levels that they showed in that uh, friendly win in Germany, you know, where... Um, you know, Vardy was able to lead the press and, and, and the midfielder sort of carried that on. When Rooney or, or Sturridge is around, it's, it's much more difficult to do that because um, I, I don't think it sort of suits either um, sort of player. So I think that would have encouraged um, Southgate most. Uh, but that, that Scotland game was a joke. I mean, it was never a 3-0 match, was it? I mean, the Scottish press went absolutely bonkers at their team afterwards. I thought they were... Um, at least the equals of England for an hour in that game. Yeah, you know, just didn't take their chances. Yeah, start of the second half, they had untold chances. Yeah, didn't they did. They? So I think probably the, uh, the the first half against Spain was, was would have given Southgate most encouragement. Isn't the problem there though, Mike? You brought up two friendly results there. You know, England give way more of a toss in friendlies than anyone else, don't they? I reckon when these other big countries go to get told they're playing England in a friendly, they sort of roll their eyes and go, oh, <laughs> Christ, we're going to have to put up with them going exactly. in the... Yeah. I mean, that tackle Vardy did early on. Was it Vardy on Aspilicueta? Yeah, I mean, well, there, there were a couple flying in. Um, I, I, I don't remember. Was that oh. one of them? I can't, I can't. Very early on. It was one of those ones where it was too early to get booked. <laughs> but, I just, you know, I just think that the others, they just think, oh, what um, the hell? I mean, it's amazing the appetite for friendly football in, in England. I mean, 85,000 yeah. people went to watch a friendly. I mean, I kind of think it's great in one sense, but I just I feel like touching their foreheads to see if they're all OK. I mean, uh, yeah, astonishing. I, 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 I hear you. Uh, it's football really. tourism, though, isn't it? You know, it is, it I is. guess the, I the tickets are fairly cheap. Wembley, people yeah. get to go to Wembley and it's all good fun. So jolly good stuff. Um, what would be the biggest cause for concern from the Wembley uh, two games as far as Southgate would be concerned. James Milton. Um, I'm, well, I'm, I'm basing this on the Scotland game because I'm not one of those uh, friendly mad fans. I, I didn't see the Spain one. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Mark touched on it. The, the way the way England's defence was kind of cut apart by, you know, some, some neat Scotland passing moves, but, it, you know, it wasn't wasn't kind of Barcelona in, in their pomp. Um and and that was really alarming. I mean, I still still I've got no particular bias about that game, but I'm still angry with Lee Griffiths for not slipping that ball through. I just, you know, just just the most selfish bit of play. And um, what? Just angry for the <laughs> just for for the just, just for football. Oh, do you, right? Did you bat both teams to score? <laughs> no, or oh, no, no. I hadn't. I hadn't oh, had a bet actually. I just, just from um, a sporting perspective. Yeah, it angered I, you. I, I just feel that you know, as a striker, obviously, you, you, they say you've got to be a bit selfish and you've got to go for goal. But you know your 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 first priority is the team, and and slide it into uh, to to Snoddy, yeah. on his left foot. You know yeah. I, th I think that could have been a great chance. Yeah, but I mean they they were almost battering England start yeah, first absolutely. fifteen of the yeah, second half. Yeah, I mean the, half, the, the second goal wasn't it was was yeah. really against the run of play. So I th I think there are definite uh, cause for concerns at the. 
the the, the heart of the England defence. I mean, what I would say, you know, the fullbacks going forward are terrific, but maybe you know, it's it's it's, it's striking that right balance there. I still can't get my head around how good Walker and Rose are. These it's amazing, days. isn't it? It's yeah. about two they years. Kind of they just suddenly became a, a brilliant, years didn't ago. they? Yeah, yeah. I think you've got to put a lot of that down to Pock, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I'd have thought so. Sure. Well, Tim, Tim Sherwood probably laid, oh, yeah, well, laid exactly, the foundations yeah. Yeah. for it. But. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Pochettino would have been coaching them and then Sherwood would have taken over halfway yeah. through the session. Yeah. Like, did, you, did you hear about this the other night? Apparently yeah. he, he just stormed into the dugout and, and took over. That was it. I'm, I'm in charge now. And, and they got uh, knocked out the FA Cup by Eastley, so that went well. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan, first one for you. How confident are you that the boys in green are going to make it all the way to Russia? Yeah, I think they'll probably get there now. They're... Um I think they work out at about a four to six shot to get there. So, I mean, yeah, about 60%. They were really, really good against Austria as well. Um, yeah, Austria weren't great, but Ireland for once kind of away from home actually took the game to the team and they, they were really good going forward for a change. They finally have guys who can play football in midfield that aren't called Wes Hoolan. I mean, Harry Arter looks really, really decent addition there. Like, thank God England didn't get him. Um, we've Jeff Hendrick who's playing well James McLean is a man possessed for Ireland and he scores a lot of goals through the middle for them Walters look decent enough again defence as well will, we might slightly struggle in centre defence there with Kieran Clark um, but overall the shape it's was promising. good though Sean wasn't it they didn't let him near him in the second half I know oh, they they Austria really had that one good yeah. chance late on didn't they but I thought they you know, they made they kept him out of their kind of final third pretty effectively, didn't oh, they? Oh, big time. Like, whenever Ireland go ahead, I mean, Tesson was like the kind of the Sweden game at Honduras. They were dominating <laughs> in Sweden. Then they, they go ahead and they suddenly it's backs to the walls and they have this kind of underdog mentality where they just the other team lays siege to their goal. Here it wasn't like that. They look like they've generally got a system. They have Shane Long to come back in. He'll be more of a tread up front. Um, they look decent. And, I mean, it would be amazing for us to get to the World Cup. First time since, uh, I think, probably Korea and Japan. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll get there. I think we're probably like, yeah, definitely, I'd say 60, 70% chance of getting there. Will you go, Sean, if you qualify? Yeah, like, I'm, everyone's like, oh, can't go to Russia. Like, you might get killed in the streets or something. I'm, I'm all for it. Like, what, I mean, getting killed in the street? <laughs> no, like, I'm all, for go, I'm all for going to Russia. Like, oh, right, for, yeah. like, ISIS aren't getting into Russia. There's no way Putin's in near the border. Like, so, I mean, I'd feel, I'd feel safe in Russia. I think I'm the all... last, probably the last five World Cups, everyone's expected mass murder on a grand scale, and it's always been pretty good, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, if anyone's going to control their boards, it's Russia. Like, they'll let in the people that, you know, I, 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 I'll feel safe in Russia. I think I'll go, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Jolly good. Okay. Uh, Mark, a Rooney question. There's two parts to it. First, the nonsense about him going out and having a few drinks. I mean, would you take any action there? And the second one, I want to ask you this. What will Wayne Rooney's career look like 12 months from now? Um, I, I, the, the second part, I, I, think he, I think he may go back to Everton um, in, in 12 months. I mean, Koeman's already made noises about uh, potentially bringing him back. Uh, I, I could sort of see that as a more natural fit than him going, say, to the MLS or somewhere like that. I'd, I'd be surprised, I think, if he was still at United come the end of the summer transfer window. So I'd go for Everton. I mean, usually on, on the, the drinking episode, usually I would um, sort of side against the papers. And there's no doubt they have um, gone over the top to, to some extent um, with, with Rooney's drinking. But I still think it is ridiculous that he's out drinking until 5am. They did have a training session that afternoon. Um, and so I don't know what he's doing, um, you know, drinking and gate crushing a wedding. And then, he, of course, he then gets injured. Um, you know, he, I, I'll put that one in sort of, you know, uh, I'm not sure Air how good he was. But, um, you know, I, 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 it just sort of strikes me as being just unprofessional, really. I mean, you know, if you've got a training session that day, I don't think you should be out drinking until five o'clock. OK, fair enough. Uh, James Milton, massive Arsenal fan. Big game this weekend, Arsenal v United. Would you allow a B to sting you in return for a guaranteed win for Arsenal? I did, well, actually, this is quite close to home because uh, probably about three months ago, I, 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 uh, a B or I think it was a B or a wasp, I'm not sure which, um, stung me on the inside of the ankle. And it no was way. very painful for a, for a couple of days. Oh, wow. So you've got a pretty good uh, um, idea yeah, of what so it feels like to lose uh, to United and get stung. <laughs> that's, that's very vivid in my mind. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I'd take that. Yeah, I, just, just because of Arsenal's woeful record at Old Trafford, I yeah. think we, we need what, whatever help we can get. So if I can. Um, 
if I can uh, take take that that sort of pain. Um, I mean, being an Arsenal fan, I'll probably be out till till uh, till March uh, with a bee sting. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd take that deal. Yeah. How difficult was it to, or how much were you in too much pain to be able to work out whether it was a bee or a wasp, or the thing uh, buggered off by the time? Yeah, you had it a just chance? kind of flew off. Yeah, um, but it was uh, it, it was it was just kind of nagging for a, for a couple of days. You know, just smarting. And, how did you um, get the sting out? Um, I, th I think I just, it's, it's all such a blur. You know, I feel like I'm on Michael Burke's 999 or yeah. whatever it was. But um, I, I think uh, in the heat of the moment, I just, just reached down and grabbed and it. And grabbed it. Then, I think um, it's yeah. probably wasp in that case, because I think a bee has sort of barbs on it. It's oh, harder okay. to get out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that was okay, well, that's very brave. You would, you would do that to, to, to get three points. Yeah. Okay, we'll be looking at that game shortly. Uh, and final question, uh, Sean O'Sullivan. When footballers get off the team bus when they're playing away, you see them, or well, what are the two things they're always, you, 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 what are the two kind of accessories you always think that they've got with them, Sean? They always have headphones, don't they? Yeah, and what's the like, other one? Headphones, are, I mean, they got their they got their iPhone on every single time. No, they've got one, a bag, haven't they? They've got like they a, always a have small, a bag. Yeah. generally Louis Vuitton travel bag, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely covenant. Yeah, they, they love the headphones gig. Um, just, yeah, too cool for school overall. Aaron Lennon rocks them, actually, in fairness. I saw him recently in a pair of Beats. I kind of thought... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I might not get myself one of those. So maybe it's working, actually, yeah. So, I mean, I'd never consider a pair of headphones. My head's too big, but um, I might actually really? go for it now. So, well, oh, a huge head, yeah. One size fits all, surely, Sean. No, no, they just don't look right in my head. Like, it's just completely <laughs> disproportionate. All right. Well, I was going to ask you, the question is, if you were a professional footballer, which one would you be more careful or more worried about being with? Would it be the headphones or the travel bag? Which one would you probably spend more time choosing? Making oh, you definitely, trip? definitely the headphones. I mean, you, the headphones give the excuse to block out all the people around you. I mean, I presume that's all they're doing. The bag doesn't really, people are shouting stuff at you. They know they're getting heard if you haven't got headphones on. I suppose the only thing is, it's it's all a little bit kind of universal now, isn't it? They all have, is, is it Beats or it's all Beats, Beats headphones yeah. and Louis Vuitton bags, don't they? There's no kind of uh, individuality there, is no, there? No, there's room for something there. There's room for a new accessory. What it is, yeah. I'm not quite sure, but there is room for it. OK, Sean, thank you very much. Mark, which question would you like to answer? Um, probably won't help punters, but I'll go for the one that Sean's just had, actually, because um, I, I went to buy a pair of Beats um, quite recently. I didn't realise how expensive they were. You don't like music, though. <laughs> no, no, but I listen to, I, I listen to uh, podcasts quite a lot, um, even when I'm doing like the washing up and, and stuff like that. So I, I, I do need Bluetooth headphones. And I picked up a pair of Beats, and I went to go to the till, and it was only then that I realised how much they were, and I sort of stepped back, um, put, put them down. How much did they want? Well, I think the pair I picked up were about 200 quid or something like that. Um, I mean, it was, it was quite... I mean, I, I ended up picking up a, a different pair for 20 that looked exactly the same. Um, so I, I think I've, sn I've, sn I've sniffed out the value there. You certainly did one. get the value. Do yeah, they do a um, job, these ones, the cheaper yeah, ones? Yeah, they... Well, you, um, it, it plays the podcast. Uh, so, but you're yeah, quite, yeah, you're but quite I mean, an image-conscious, brand-conscious man, Mark. I mean, presumably you wouldn't wear them down the street, no? Um, no, I wouldn't wear any headphones down the street. I think they are for, for footballers only, really. I think, you, I, I think you look like a bit of a plum when you've got your headphones on down the street, other than if you're a footballer with your Louis Vuitton bag, really. Excellent. OK, good answer. James? Um, I'm, I'm back on the headphones issue as well, actually. I, um, I, I, they're obviously a key part of the the kit, but I, I find a, a fun little game when you're watching the players come off the the team buses. Just think of the most unlikely uh, thing that they could be listening to, kind of uh, Jordan Henderson with a, a Jane Austen audio book. Oh yeah, that'd like be that. good. Wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, kind of yeah, li Walcott livens up those shots. Shostakovich, perhaps. absolutely. Yeah, 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 no, that is good actually. I'll do that in future. Yeah, because I like those shots them coming off. Uh, Sean, you've already had the uh, the burning issue of the headphones in the bag, so you can't answer that one. Which one would you like? Yeah, I'll go with the beast thing. I'll take it for a United win, obviously, as a United <laughs> fan. Um, up to the age of, like, 11, it would have been, I'd have been all over taking the bee sting for it. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a, a bad experience. Can we just, can, sorry, can we just clarify? It's a bee sting and not a bee sting there, because they're two, <laughs> bee two sting. different things there. Yeah. I think it was actually a wasp, but I'm sure they're, they're all the one. Yeah, I was, I was about 10 years old. I thought it would be a great idea to try to impress a girl by grabbing a wasp in front of her and physically killing it with my hand. Ooh. It stung me. I fainted. Um, she's gone on to better things. Oh, I'm backing baddish ways. I mean, so that's where it's gone. Oh, goodness <laughs> me. And how, how did you woo your current girlfriend, Sean? The, the teacher, I presume you didn't do anything so uh, drastic as try and grab a wasp. No, just a, a goal, a first goal score treble. She was all over it. She was ah, delighted. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> easy right. game. Good stuff. Jolly good. Well done, lads. Thank you very much indeed for all that. Right, let's get stuck in. Have we got a break? No, no. We're going to do the Saturday matches first and the aforementioned uh, Man United Arsenal game. Game of the weekend. 12 30 kickoff. It's going to be absolutely different class this one. Uh, obviously, the everyone else would just be banging on about Marino versus um, 
Vengo, we're talking about bees and wasps, but we'll also get stuck into the actual minutiae of the game. And to set us up and set the scene, Sean, how do Paddy Power bet on Manu Ars? Yeah, um, United 13 to 8 favourites here at home. Uh, the draw 12 to 5. And Arsenal, just very, very slight underdogs here. They're 17 to 10. 17 to 10. James, are you able to look at this one dispassionately? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm probably a bit, a bit too pessimistic about Arsenal, um, uh, given, given the, the, the emotions uh, involved. But they've, they've been drifting a little bit. Obviously, uh, Alexis Sanchez was, was a, a concern how he'll, um, uh, how he'll be after his, his heroics for Chile when, uh, when Wenger really didn't want him to play. But he, uh, he said it'd be suicidal, <coughs> didn't he? Did, yeah, I think that was probably a bit strong. But, um, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, Sanchez is such a, such a willing character um, that he, he worked his worked his backside off and and scored uh, two cracking goals. Um, so I'm, I'm slightly tentative about Arsenal. I think that their, their league form hasn't been brilliant recently. You know, uh, expected them to, to win tot, uh, against Tottenham, who were a bit out of sorts. Um, Borough, they didn't beat, did they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they were, they were lucky to, to even get a draw at home to Borough. So, and their record at Old Trafford is so poor. Uh, the, the the angle I like on in this game is, uh, is, is early goals, actually. I know that's... Um, not not always ideal in the. In don't the, normally associate that with the Saturday lunchtime game. No, do you? no, you don't. But I think in this one, you know, United, if it's a going day for them this season, they they tended to to do it in the first half. Um, I mean, they they were four 0 up against Leicester at half time, three 0 up against Swansea last time out. They obviously had that capitulation at, at Chelsea early on, um, and and there were three first half goals in in uh, both meetings between these these sides last season. So I think it could. Um, could could be one not to uh, not to tune in too late. Okay, so how do we turn that into betting gold? Um, yeah, there's there's kind of over one and a half uh, first half goals. I think is is around uh, around nine to four, or or, or uh, kind of more secure a goal in both halves is uh, is about eight to eleven. I think. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Mark. What's your assessment of this one? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the draw could be the, the, the way to go here. I mean, if you have a look at Arsenal's away record last season to the top half teams, five of their away games were draws. Um, Arsenal have got a, a, you know, an excellent away record this season, one for draw one. But you look at who they've played, Watford, Burnley, Leicester, Hull and Sunderland. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, you'd be surprised really if they had anything, if if they had fewer points than that really from from that very comfortable uh, fixture list. United, for all of their problems under Van Gaal and and Jose Mourinho, they've only lost two of their last 23 at Old Trafford. That the reason I'm not going for a home win. Um, just wondering about the lack of firepower in that United team with Ibrahimovic uh, suspended. Uh, Rooney, of course, uh, missed out for England. Not entirely sure if he's 100% fit. Even if he is, I mean been a while since he was able to you know perform to a high level in, in that number nine role so um james already mentioned the doubts over alexis sanchez so um, I, I think the draw could be a, a decent runner in this one okay mark thank you for that sean o'sullivan uh what do you like in terms of when it's man you do you tend to be able to look at it nice and neutrally or do you get all uh, the red mist comes over you and you get all biased I think the years, as the years have gone by, kind of being in the trading floor, yeah, you get you get slightly less bias as it goes along. You look at things just more objectively, price-wise. I actually think United look slightly big. Um, I think it's probably the price is going to be debased on obviously their form this year, but I think there there's got to be some regression back to where to the mean. Let's say they need to get better soon. I think it just has to happen, and I don't think you'll be getting 13 day to home to Arsenal any time in the future if they can just get things right. Um, i am probably keep the drawn side, as Mark's alluding to there, maybe draw no bet there, 8-11. to um, It could well, I mean, pan out to be fairly low scoring, as we're saying there, with Sanchez out, Rooney out, possibly Ibrahimovic out. nil nils 9-1. to I mean, if I'm having a first goal scorer bet, um, with the fact that Ibra's out and Rooney, you know, 50-50, there's not too many other goal scorers in that United team. What so I think do, Rash- play Rashford up front? I think Rashford or? will definitely play through the middle of front. I think he's 11-2 to first goal. I mean, that could be big. I mean, he's got an incredible goals for him in. There's not a load of data, but he's phenomenal. I mean, he seems to score whenever you require Rashford to do something on a debut or anything else, whether it be England, whether it be United, he tends to come to the fore. I remember against City last year, he scored a cracker. I mean, I think this is exactly the game for him to come into and do something. I think 11-2 to two first goal. If anyone's going to score for United, I think he's by far the most likely candidate. What are you doing with the bookings? You nice and high on this one. Obviously, everyone remembers Van Nistelrooy jump. Oh, sorry, Keon jumping all over Van Nistelrooy and pizzas getting launched around and all. Yeah, I'd imagine. I, I'd say the the point spread will probably. Up, we haven't gone up with it yet, but it'll be up around the 50, 60 point mark at least. I'd say the spread will probably sit somewhere around the 60 point mark. Who's refing it, anyone? Uh, Arbiter Mariner. I believe. Arbiter Mariner. That's quite a big game for him, <coughs> isn't it? Hmm. 
as you know, I'm a devout non-basher of refs, but I, I, I don't think Mariner's quite as good as some of the other guys who, who could have taken that, that top fixture. OK, we'll see what happens there. And at 5.30, it's Tottenham versus West Ham. This will be another decent game and no mistake as West Ham go northwest to their rivals. Bitter rivals, of course. Been, here's a good stat for you. Been under, and I'm not going to make out as mine. I think Jack sussed it out. There's been under two and a half goals in Tottenham's last five home games and under two and a half goals in West Ham's last five league games. So will it be dull uh, before, James, you answer that? Uh, Sean, oblige us with a show, please. Yeah, Spurs are short. Um, they're 8-15. to 15. Uh, The draw... Oh, bloody hell, that's yeah, short, isn't it? It is short, isn't it? Yeah, 31-10, oh. the draw, and West Ham are 11-2. to two. They do have a lot of injuries now, but yeah, 11-2. to two. Jesus. Eight to fifteen. It's amazing. What do you think will happen here, James? It's um, yeah. I mean, it, it does look a, a skinny prize for a team who've scored six times in five home games. But I mean, as as I'm sure Mark will uh, will defend his boys. You know that that they have had significant injuries. And I think that's uh, that's abating. And West Ham have lost lost four of their um, five away games, so they're not in great shape either. Um, I think, as as the under stats suggest, I, th I think it will be a tight one, and uh, I'm, I'm edging towards a kind of one nil Tottenham uh, victory in this. I don't think it's going to be free flowing, um, but I, I just think Tottenham got slightly more belief, and West Ham still, um, I, you know, don't really fancy them in these in these big games. Would you just have a little token one nil, then sit back and watch that? I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not. It's it's not not a game that I have a, a strong opinion on. But yeah, I think Tottenham. You know, as they did last season at times, I think they they're, they're a solid side who are able to grind out wins in in these kind of games. While pressing a poultice, your bee sting that you incurred <laughs> earlier in the afternoon, Mark. What do you think will happen here? Eight to fifteen. I mean, even for, as a devout Tottenham fan like you, isn't that a little short? Oh, it is. I, I think it is. I mean, the seven without a win. Um, it's, it's been a tough run. A fixtures, Kane's back. Um, I think Alderweireld could be back as well, which is probably just as important for them um, at the back. But I thought they played reasonably well at Arsenal a couple of weeks ago, deserved their point. I mean, I'm amazed this game's allowed to kick off at 5.30 on a Saturday. Oh, really? I mean, this is, Will it be a bit uh, naughty? It, <laughs> proper naughty. Is Will it? The, 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 Danny the, Dyer will probably be there, won't he? Way, I, In I, an I executive box. <laughs> I doubt it'll be in the executive box because they're out on the, the. Most of them lead out onto the the shelf at Tottenham these days. So I mean, he he probably wouldn't be welcome there. I mean, the, the, the key for me for this game is that it is West Ham's biggest game of the season. Slaven Bilic has already come out and said that they've scored in eight of their last nine matches against Tottenham, and the one that they didn't was when Mark Noble missed a penalty. Um, when, when Spurs won with 10 men at Upton Park. I, I quite like both teams to score. I know you've just mentioned all of those stats there, but I think the, the, this is a game where West Ham just, you know, do try and they, it's almost, you know, that they have to go forward. Their fans just demand that they attack Tottenham and I'm not sure that they're necessarily suited to doing that and um, I think Spurs will may, maybe win the game but I, I do like the idea of West Ham scoring like I say they, they've got a good record um, of scoring against Spurs they've scored in their last five matches at White Hart Lane as well and, and landed a couple of victories but they're probably not playing well enough at the moment What position so, will West Ham finish in Mark? I mean, I, I've been expecting them to improve, Bruce. Um, you know, but I, I think after this stage of the season, they are kind of where, where they are. Maybe somewhere around, around about 14th. Okay, do. Uh, Sean, what's your take on this fixture? Yeah, I, like I, I, I was really surprised. I mean, it's coming from Ireland, just the, the absolute amount of hatred from West Ham fans towards Spurs. I have a good friend over there, Dan. I went to watch a couple of games with him last year at West Ham, and I mean, they absolutely despised him. Like, it's incredible. And Billich is such a passionate guy. I mean, this is his big, big game of the season. I mean, I think he needs a result here. And Spurs haven't won in seven. I can't be backing him at eight to 15. I mean, West Ham with a goal head start, you're getting the draw inside there, it's seven to five. I think I'm going. I think I'm coming down on that. I mean, it's a tough game. I mean, it's Spurs should probably see it through, but like I just think there's too much value in that West Ham price. Um, as I said, I think they'll be really, really up for it. And seven to five double chance seems seems slightly too big to me. Mm, yeah, I like the sound of that. Right, let's get the best bets of the week. This will not be beaten. James, kick us off. I'm going for Barnsley to beat Wigan in the Championship. This was a, a League One fixture last season, but um, Barnsley have, have made a really good fist of uh, uh, of the, the the step up. Uh, seven points better off than Wigan. They've scored 13 more goals than them, and um, 20 of their 21 points have come against teams outside the top 10. So they're 
you know, that, that's their sort of level and Wigan are, are, are down there and I think Barnsley are, are, are a good bet at home. You convinced me, Mark? Yeah, I'm going to go for Liverpool to win and both teams to score at Southampton. I mean, this is a bet that's won in all eight. Uh, Liverpool have won eight games this season in the Premier League. All eight of them they've conceded in. I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal record they've got of just being able to, to blitz teams, really, but defensively not entirely sure about them. Southampton have only kept one clean sheet in their last seven. I think Liverpool will, will, will sort of carry on their, their brilliant record, even without... Adam Lallana, but I feel they'll need to score two or three to, to get the job done. Far it's too a, good a game not to be on TV as well, Mark, isn't it? It, it really is, yeah. Um, and, and this price is just under three to one. So, is it mean, really? It, yeah, so if there's a... It, the, 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 yeah, I mean, there are ways of watching these three PM games, aren't there? So I mean, it, it, it may be worth going the extra mile to, to see it. I tell you, what, I did the uh, I did the both and over. No, Liverpool and both in the game against Watford. It was so funny because Liverpool absolutely wiped the floor of them for an hour, and, uh, 80 minutes, and then Watford just went down the other end, created absolutely untold chances, and took one. It was great. It was, I loved it. West Brom. I mean, West Brom didn't even create a load of chances, did that Anfield? And nor did ten man a hole, and they still managed. No, to and, score. and they gave Palace two goals with absolutely yeah. childlike defending. It was ridiculous. Okay, so that sounds like a good shout. Have you got a price on that, by the way, Sean? Yeah, we're eleven to four there. Liverpool to win, Bodings and Barnsley are uh, six to four. Six to four. On what price is mine? I've gone quite dull compared to you guys. Scunthorpe at home to Oldham. Just two seconds. I'll actually give you my one there while I'm getting that price. Okay, um, go on. Yeah, we. I, I've Brighton there at seven to twenty, playing to playing tomorrow night. Um, yeah, yeah, home to I, the Villa, aren't they? Yeah, you love me going on about Brighton, Bruce, no, I don't but. Mind, um, mate. But I mean, I'll go on about them further in kind of the antipost section. But just like they've lost one of their last 19 home games, they're playing phenomenally well. Eight of those last 13 look, look, home hang games. Hang on a sec. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you've got another thing about how good Brighton are, bloody button it and save it for that. All right. There's only so much Brighton we can have. <laughs> That's so fair enough. 70 so to 20, they win the game. 17 to 20. And what price Scunny to to win against Oldham? Yeah, Scunthorpe are, are four to six shots. I mean, Morris just continues to fire there, doesn't he? Um, that'd be a nice price in that fourfold, actually. It's coming out at uh, nearly 28 to 1 there. 28 to 1. Blimey, I like the sound of that. Right, we'll have a quick break and then we'll look at Sunday's live game. Here's Paddy Power's new and exclusive kicker feature. Simply place a bet, add a kicker, and if your team wins big, you'll win bigger. 18 plus gambleaware.co.uk. TNCs apply. Welcome back. It's Bruce Millington, James Milton, Mark Langdon, and from Paddy Power, Sean O'Sullivan. We've looked at the Saturday stuff. Let's look at Sunday's live game. We've just got the one, but it's a very interesting one. It's at four o'clock. It's Middlesbrough versus Chelsea. Um, Chelsea have won their last five league games by a combined total of 16 goals to nil, but Middlesbrough are going well as well. I keyed into Twitter the other day. Um, Conti clueless and there was a spell at the start of October where the Twitter was awash with tweets from Chelsea fans saying this guy's clueless get rid of him he's turned them around he's won them over hasn't he James they're looking good now Chelsea aren't they yeah looking very good yeah and obviously his, his switch to his, his favoured formation uh, three at the back is, is working very well it looks so good <clears> that system that it almost makes you it makes you think you know for 200, 150 years, managers have struggled to get the right system. But when you look at the way they play that setup, it almost just looks like the perfect system. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah. I mean, it's obviously the combination of, of, of excellent coaching uh, and 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 having the right players. I mean, I, I'm loving the the renaissance of Victor Moses. It's a real uh, kind of a austerity Britain story, isn't it? You know, Superb. Don't don't spend money on on something new. Just. Uh, Make do and mend. And Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, and despite it's his good. 30 caps for Nigeria, there's still clamour for him <laughs> to be in the England team, isn't there? Yeah. Who yeah. wins this then, Jamesy? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Middlesbrough certainly are improving. Uh, as, as we mentioned, they're very good at Arsenal in the draw. They nicked a, a, a point at Man City as well and beat Bournemouth in their last home game. I just think Chelsea are, are, are really purring now. And, um, and and I was just looking at their, their early goal stats as well, Chelsea. In the last four games, which obviously they've all won all of them, um, they scored in the 19th minute, the sixth minute, the first minute against Manchester United and the seventh minute. So I, I think um, I think Chelsea Chelsea should be too powerful. And, and, and I think um, I think I'd go for the Chelsea Chelsea uh, double result here. I mean, uh, looking at sort of Chelsea win to nil markets, uh, you know, the bookies aren't really taking many chances with those kind of prices. I think they're five to four there. You know, the clean sheet uh, run has, has been very impressive. But but yeah, I think Chelsea, if they're if they are in the mood, I think they could uh, could could break through very early on. Chelsea, Chelsea for uh, James. There isn't that a lyric? What what's the band called? Who had it? Ch Chelsea uh, Dagger. Chelsea Dagger. The what were they called? The, the Fratellis. Fratellis yeah. 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 I think Chelsea, Chelsea might be a lyric from that great song. 
Uh, Mark, what do you think? I'm looking here, Bruce, at Chelsea to win by exactly one goal. Um, I think it may be uh, a bit tighter than some of their, their recent romps. Uh, I mean, Borough have already drawn five matches this season. All three home defeats have, have been by the solitary goal. And one of those was against Tottenham, I suppose, would be a comparable. Uh, you know, you, you could compare them to, to Chelsea probably not that much difference between the two. So um, I, I, I think that could be the, the, the way to go. I mean, James has mentioned all of those early goals for Chelsea. No doubt that's helped them. You know, it makes such a massive difference if you can score first. And, you know, the, the, the game just becomes... I mean, if you have a look at West Ham last season, they scored a load of early goals in, in those big matches. And everyone wondered how come that they had such a good record against them and why that can't continue. I think it's because of all them early goals. I'm, I'm not so sure that, that Middlesbrough will allow Chelsea that amount of freedom, really. Karanka's had two weeks to come up with a... You know, a formation that, that kind of makes it a, a more boring game than, than what Chelsea have been involved in recently. I think they may have to grind it out. So I'll go for Chelsea to win by one. OK, before we get Sean's view and the latest bet and a quick quiz, first one to shout a name, the a correct answer out wins. They played for both clubs, Middlesbrough and Chelsea. Uh, did Graham Massol ever play for Middlesbrough? Didn't he? Not having that. I'm thinking... I've got to get one here. Uh, Zenden. Well I in, think well I in. Think Mark Swartzer. I think that was, think that was producer Jack. Was actually. that yours, Jack? <laughs> Jack? Jack had his hand up there. Was, was Zenden the one you were going for? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the one I had in mind. Well done, lads. Excellent. Um, I think also there was a, there's a, a centre-back. Oh, well, I was thinking Fester. Um, but I don't, I, don't know, Fester. The, um, I, I don't know if I'm just making it up that he ever played for Chelsea. That, that, there was a Nigerian centre-back on loan at... Borough, is it? Om Omarua? Or? Yeah, did he ever play for Chelsea? He may not have played for Chelsea. Not. That's that's a that's steward's <laughs> inquiry Chelsea there. Chelsea player that's never played for Chelsea. <laughs> Who? There's Jeremy? Jeremy. Jeremy? Yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy, the, uh, the Cameroonian. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of, Lango, don't you? Um, <coughs> a former uh, colleague of ours who went on to uh, oh, yes, make yeah, his name yeah. in the world <laughs> of spread betting. Sorry, we're getting away from it. Right, Sean O'Sullivan, first, how do you bet on Chelsea v Borough? No, Borough v Chelsea, and second, what will happen? We're 6-1 to one Middlesbrough, 16-5 to five the draw, and 1-2 uh, to two Chelsea, Bruce. Um, again, like Chelsea probably win 1-2 to two away from home with the Middlesbrough, who are improving. It's just, it's just way too short for me. I, don't, I, I just can't be back. And it's one of these games where I'm struggling to find an angle. I'll wait now and see if Hazard plays. I mean... I, I think he's about 50-50 to line up. If he doesn't play, he got a knock midweek. If he doesn't play, Cost is going to be a gigantic value to score first. Um, Mark was on him, la Hazard, obviously, last week. I was on Costa. Between the two of them, they're getting all the gold for Chelsea at the moment. You take one out, the other one's going to be a massive value. So watch for lineups there. And if Hazard's not in, Costa becomes an unbelievable bet. Probably the bet of the weekend, I think. Okie dokie. Before we look at Monday's game, let's get your anti post, your, your new anti post bet that you think people should latch on. So we'll start with you, James. Uh, I'm, I'm going for a bit of a conservative one, but I think it's a solid one. Bradford each way in League One. Um, Paddy Power, 9 to 2, still a, a quarter of the odds, three places, I believe. And Bradford have lost one of their 17 league games. They've had plenty of draws, but they, you know, they've played some good sides. They're unbeaten in seven games against the, the rest of the top 10. They hammered uh, Rochdale, who were 11th, 4-0 last, last weekend. And already there's a big gap between Scunthorpe, Sheffield United, Bradford and, and Bolton and, and the rest. And I, I just think Bradford have, have the, the, the consistency to, um, to, to stick around and certainly make the, uh, make the places. Excellent. Mark, what's yours? I'm, I'm afraid James is only going to pick up the each-way money uh, <laughs> that they're in League One because Sheffield United are going to absolutely hose up. Um, I, I think... Paddy Power going nine to five. I, I just, I, I think they'll make up these six points on Scumfall pretty quickly. Actually, they've got the game in hand. They've already been away to all other members of the top four, so they've had a very difficult, um, you know, start to the season in terms of fixtures. Obviously, the new manager Chris Wilder came in, took him a little while to get things right. He switched to a back three, which seems to be all the rage at the moment. They've got five home games coming up in the next seven. I won't bore you with all the fixtures, but they are. You know, quite comfortable. And you have a look at Scumfort for all that they've been, you know, uh, excellent this season. They've only played away from home to two teams currently in the top half, Port Vale and Wimbledon, who are among the relegation favourites. And I think they've only played one of the top five in total. That was Sheffield United, who drew 2-2 um, with 10 men. I, I, I just think that, you know, with Sharp and, and Leon Clark, you know, he's fit now. I mean, Sheffield United just, got, uh, just scoring so many goals. I think they'll swallow Scully up. 
Oh, I'm devastated to hear that because Scunthorpe are the brightest plant in my antipost garden, but you've both <clears throat> um, basically just taken the secateurs and cut well, it off of the stem. I mean, yeah, we're, we're, Scunny were, what, 20 to 1 at the start of the season? Which, yeah. you know, I, I think now we've got to judge them you know, as the leaders and, and look for, for holes in them. And I, I just feel, you, you know, Morris is you know, he, he's scoring loads of goals, but I don't know where that's come from. He's not really shown that before. I, I do wonder whether... They have just had the advantage of a very easy run of fixtures early on. Okie doke. Uh, and very quickly, Sean, who, why do you fancy Brighton for what? I, will, I, will, I won't bore you, Bruce. Um, they're they're nine to two. I mean, Newcastle are the outstanding team in that league, but it's a two horse race. Brighton is an absolute each way bet to nothing. Really? I mean, uh, absolutely, definitely. I think Norwich are continuing to fall away. Even I think Alex Neal is actually a pretty good manager. You sack him. I don't really know who they bring in. I don't really see them rapidly improving. I think they've left too much to kind of catch up now. And Brighton have been phenomenal for a while now. I think the consistency is there. I mentioned in previous podcasts, Tony Bloom can spend the money in January if he needs to. He's got plenty there. Their home form is just insane. It's like they've only lost one of their last 19, eight of those 13 of the last 13 they've won to nil. Um, yeah, you're getting, what is it, nine to six, six to four. They basically come in the top two, which is a steal. And with the chance that they actually might catch Newcastle and win it. Just a small one on, like Newcastle went off seven to five at home to Brighton. There's nothing between these teams in terms of ratings. They're very similar rated in Asia. Um, they're three points behind. That's all that really splits them. I think they can make that up. They can win the, the reverse fixture and possibly give them a run to win the league. Righty ho, fair enough. I have to accept that that, you know, that all makes sense. OK, let's be back in a minute with West Brom Burnley. Here's Paddy Power's new and exclusive kicker feature. Simply place a bet, add a kicker, and if your team wins big, you'll win bigger. 18 plus gambleaware.co.uk. TNCs apply. Hi there, it's Bruce Millington, it's James Milton, it's Mark Langdon, and it's Sean O'Sullivan from Paddy Power. Let's look at Monday night's live game. It's West Brom versus Burnley. They played for both clubs. Come on. Mind you, that isn't easy, is it? That's really hard. That is <laughs> difficult. I'm, I'm trying to think of the... Uh, I'm sure there was a wide player that's been in trouble quite recently. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, that, 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 has played for, that has played for both. But, um, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll crack on with the yeah. preview and if you get one, just blurt it out incongruously <laughs> whenever it comes to mind, OK? And no Googling, you two. James is next to me, can't. <laughs> right, OK, so it's West Brom v Burnley at 8 o'clock, which is great news for all other programmes that are on at 8 o'clock because it means they'll get decent ratings. Um, Burnley unbeaten in three. They've won two. West Brom's win over Leicester before the break. It was their first since they beat West Ham in mid-September. Burnley were hideously patronised by uh, Clive Tildesley in midweek, where Tom Heaton was passing the ball out short, and Clive Tildesley says, cool, I bet they don't pass it out the back like this at, Bo at Burnley. But of course they do. They're a nice footballing team. So there's a clash of styles. Who's going to win, James? Uh, I, I really don't know, I'm afraid. I, I, th I thought, I was thinking of, uh, of, of West Brom, but, you know, they're, they're odds on. And, and Burnley, uh, I think, you know, we've, we've discussed this uh, uh, on the pod before, that... You know their home form is going to decide whether whether or not they stay up. Their away games have been at Chelsea, Southampton, Leicester, and Manchester United. Uh, you know, perhaps unsurprisingly, they've lost three of them and then and then managed to nick a, a nil nil against ten man United at Old Trafford. So you know it's it's harsh to judge them on on that start away from home, but I I I, I can't really fancy them. Um, and, and the the bet I was looking at was actually second half to have more goals. I think it could be a, a slow burner, which is a polite way of saying it might not be very Absolute good in the first crap, half. Yeah. Um, West Brom, 17 of the 27 goals in their games have been after half time, and 17 of the 26 in Burnley games have, have come after the break. So, you know, maybe don't tune in for the first half and, and hopefully it'll liven up. But it's... Uh, it's Yeah, it's a horrible game to, to call for, for betting purposes, I think. OK, Mark? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, it's, it's not going to be a classic, is it, uh, this one? I was just looking at Burnley. They're, they're a way run. I mean, they've played Chelsea, Leicester, Southampton and Manchester United. They've had four shots on target away from home in the Premier League this season and conceded 41. Um, so even allowing for the fact that it's been difficult, I mean, that's an incredible amount of shots they're allowing. And Tom Heaton been a very busy man or, or, you know, for, for a lot of this season. I was looking at him at 16s with Paddy Power to be man of the match in case he, you know, he, he has to um, you know, pull off a, another load of saves. I mean, West Brom haven't quite got the firepower of some of the teams I've mentioned there. But, I mean, he could be busy in, you know, and, and be part of a, a Burnley sort of rearguard action that, that takes something 
from the game. Uh, the other one I was looking at, maybe McCauley, first goal. I mean, he's got four in 17 for club and country this season. He's going off, I think it's 20 to 1, um, first goal scorer. Could give you a run for your money, but th this is not one to, to have a massive smash up, I don't think. Are you going to have a massive smash up on it, Sean O'Sullivan? Yeah, it's actually my favourite first goal scorer bit of the week, to be honest. Um, it's oh, no I'm going to say, let, yeah, it, Lango, <laughs> guess who it is? Um, well, probably Rondon or Chadley. Is it? It, um, I think Chadley actually might be out for Rondon's not the worst show, but it's actually no goal score, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, right. I think it's going to be an um, absolutely chronic match. I mean, Burnley have only got one away goal all season. I know they've had tough opposition there, as Mark said, but West Brom have failed to score five of their last eight home games. I mean, it just is all the signs. They probably both take a point. It's going to be drab. Um, no goal scores, 13 to 2. I keep that inside in case one of the lads pops up with an own goal, and then you'll still get paid out. Um, yeah. Drab game. Under one and a half for more safety conscious punters is a 15 to 8 shot, and under two and a half at 8 to 13 is an absolute nap. What price of Burnley to win it? Burnley are actually um, they're 10 to 3 to win the game. West Brom are shade odds on. I couldn't be touching that at 10 to 11. And the draw, which would be very popular at 12 to 5. I'm going to bet Burnley. I think they're half decent. And by the way, lads, on the they played for both clubs. There were two players who swapped clubs this summer. Well, it says here they did. I oh, mind you know this was posted on the internet in February. Stephen Reed and Chris Baird. Stephen Reed. <laughs> Someone said Delroy Facey played for both clubs. Oh. Uh, Frank Sinclair. I'm, I'm Frank trying Sinclair. to. I, I, there's a player. I just can't. I, I can picture him. I actually. Richard Chaplow. Chaplow. That's the one I was. That's the one I was thinking of. He's been in trouble. Um, oh, is he? Recently, out, out in, in America in the second division. He was the one I was on. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to think of the bald-headed player. I, was, I remember him from when he was playing at Millwall. I did a top sports shift with him, which is... Um, I, I just couldn't remember his name. Yeah, Chaplow. Good shout. Michael Phelan as well, apparently. So there you go. Right, I think we're all done then, aren't we? Uh, anything to add, chaps? What are you doing? Have you, oh, you share the season ticket. Oh, no, it's at Old Trafford, isn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't matter yeah. if you share the season ticket. No, no, I'm it? on, um, on, on uh, daddy duties on Saturday. Anyway, what are you so going to be doing? Soft play area? Or? Um, yeah, well, possibly. She's 13 now, isn't she? A bit old for all that. <laughs> she's, uh, well, I went for a, a parents' meeting at her nursery and they, they said her, her key skill is rolling the ball. Oh, so brilliant. So she's a good, you know, good distribution, kind of more Claudio Bravo than, than Joe Hart. So, uh, Excellent. Promising, yeah. Good stuff. Lango, you've got sickness in the camp, so you'll be hoping that clears up. If it does, what does the weekend hold for you? Well, um, either way, um, it involves working. I'm, I'm working Saturday and Sunday. Are you on the wireless on Sunday with, Dan with that Danny Kelly? I'm, I'm not on, no. no oh, yeah. um, I'm, uh, we're on rotation, so it's not me. But no, I'm, um, I'm just in the, the racing post um, offices Saturday and Sunday this week. Jolly so. good. And Sean, how's the road to treating you this weekend? I, I'm off. I'm going to Rod Stewart, so that's going to be super exciting. Yeah, Rod Stewart. He brings Stewart. together so many generations. Can't wait. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm met Rod Stewart um, about this time last year, actually. Did you? I'm sure he. I'm sure he remembers it as vividly as. Where did I you meet him? Uh, it was a Ronan Keating charity event where um, me, Henry Hardwick, and various others got absolutely smashed at um, the, the Bobby Moore quiz the year before, and all paid 300 quid a head. Um, for this um, Ronan Keaton charity night, and Rod Stewart popped up. So, I mean, it was absolutely horrendous value. You didn't get any drink for your 300 quid or anything oh like goodness. that, but we did manage to meet Rod Stewart. Right, well, I think that should be the only reference to the Bobby Moore quiz, Mark, don't you? Perhaps <laughs> known as wisely after last week. Yeah. Uh, right, OK, thank you very much. If you enjoyed listening, do please go onto iTunes and subscribe and rate us on there. We're back next Thursday, and we've also got the Racing Postcast tomorrow. The Football Postcast in association with Paddy Power. Their new iPhone app is simpler than a Tim Sherwood team talk, so download it now.